Okay, we've got two inequalities to solve here. I'm going to go through it in two different ways. Method one, or well, method two, is going to be to multiply through by x squared. Because when you have an inequality, if you times through by x, then if x is negative, the sign switches. If it's positive, it doesn't. So if we times by through by x squared, then it will necessarily be positive and we can keep the sign the same. Method one, which is how I decided to do it, um, is to split up into different cases. So case one, I'm just going to say that x is greater than zero. And that's going to allow me to just times through by x, no problem. Then I'm going to get x plus 2x squared minus x cubed is greater than 2. Therefore, x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2 is going to be less than 0. And I've got a quadratic cubic to deal with. Let's try and find a factor. Well, this is quite a small number. If I put in 1, into here, then I'd get 1 minus 2 minus 1 plus 2, which is 0. So that means that x minus 1 is a factor. I'm using the factor theorem here. I'm just kind of doing it quite quickly. I could try and factorize it directly. I always just do a, a simple polynomial division. minus x and this works out nicely so where does that leave me x minus 1 times x squared minus x minus 2 is going to be less than 0 let's see if it factorizes again going to get x minus 2 and x plus 1. So my roots are 1, 2 and minus 1. Just like with a quadratic inequality, I think a sketch is now a good idea. It's going to go through at 1, at 2, at minus 1. It must come up from minus infinity. It's going to go through the axis at 2, come back down, and look a bit like that. So I'm interested in where it's less than 0, but don't forget we've got this overarching condition that x is greater than 0 as well. So x is greater than 0, which means I'm not interested in any of this. Where is it less than 0? It's going to be between 1 and 2. So 1 is going to be less than x, which is going to be less than 2. That is a definite solution for case one. Okay, case two, x is less than zero, but it's going to play out in exactly the same way, except when I times th through by x, I'm just going to swap the sign around. So I'm going to get exactly the same cubic, but this time it's going to be greater than zero, because I just swapped the sign around there. Let me draw it again. But this time it's less than zero, so I can just get rid of all of that. I'm interested when it's greater than zero. It's here, so it's going to be minus one less than x less than zero. And therefore, overall, This gives us minus 1 less than x less than 0, or 1 less than x less than 2. Let's talk about the second method. So back to 1 1 plus 2x minus x squared is greater than 2 over x. This time, I'm going to times through by x squared. I don't need to split up into two different cases. The only problem is we create a quartic from this. x squared plus 2x cubed minus x to the 4 
is greater than 2x. Rearrange that. x to the 4 minus 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2x is greater than 0. And all we do now is factorize out an x out, and we get exactly the same cubic that we factorized before. So actually, it's going to become x plus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 2, which is going to be... Um, sorry, I've just realized I made a little mistake. I should have swapped the sign around there. Because I added x to the 4 onto the right-hand side. I, yeah, that should be like that. Okay, I, I don't know, there's something about just times in through by x squared I'm not quite a fan of, because I just sort of think you might introduce extra solutions. But it actually does work out really nicely and is arguably the, the best method here. Because I've got my quartic, the roots are now zero. I'm going to get a slightly different graph. One, two, and minus one. This time it's going to come down from positive infinity come back up like this and then back round and then like this so if I'm interested in where it's less than zero you can see really nicely we just get the solution minus one less than x less than less than zero or one less than x less than two okay two methods both work well arguably method two works a bit better here but yeah nice question Okay, on to part two. We're asked to solve this inequality. The bad news is that now we have a square root um, each side. In fact, the good news is that these must necessarily be greater than zero. So we don't have to split into cases or anything like that. We're also told a condition, this is quite nice, that x has to be greater or equal to minus 10 over 3. Because if it's not, then this one here will be not defined. We're dealing with the real number system here. So just bear that one in mind, because we might get solutions through squaring that we then have to uh, reject. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is square both sides. We can do this because both sides are positive. That's going to give me 3x plus 10 is greater than... I'll just write a double bracket out for this one. So 4 plus x plus 4, and then I've got these cross terms, which is going to give me 4 times x plus 4 rooted. All right, now do not, under any circumstance, square this again as things stand. Instead, first deal with this, get, add, subtract. From both sides 8 and x which is going to give us 2x plus 2 is greater than four lots of x plus 4 actually this is working out really nicely before we square it let's divide through by 2 so x plus 1 is going to be greater than 2 times the square root of x plus 4 okay now just be a little bit careful here we know that x is greater or equal to minus 10 over 3 so it could be negative but if we've got a negative here, there's no way that that could be greater than 2 roots x plus 4. So we require, actually, that x plus 1 is going to be greater than 0. And therefore, x will be greater than minus 1. Okay, so that's just a little extra condition that's come on in. Let's square again now. I'll get x squared plus 2x plus 1 on the left-hand side, and that will be greater then I need to square the 2 and the x plus 4 rooted, so 4 times x plus 4. And this is 4x plus 16. That means that x squared minus 2x minus 15 is greater than 0. x minus 5 times x plus 3 must be greater than 0. We get roots of 5 and minus 3. So I'm interested in where this is greater than 0, but I require that x is greater than minus 1. 
so I can actually get rid of all of this part of the graph and I can see the only region that is going to be satisfied is here where the graph becomes positive again. Therefore, our final answer is going to be that x is greater than 5. Well done.